Let's talk about philosophical assumptions in business research and why they are important. Philosophy is the study of knowledge and uh, we need to make assumptions about things and why can't we just know why do we have to assume this is something that I talk about in this video. Let's start off what is science and what is the objective of scientific or academic research. It is to produce knowledge in a particular field of science. So we need to start by asking if we need to produce knowledge, what exactly is knowledge? It turns out that philosophers cannot agree on how knowledge is defined. And if you uh, take a different definition, that actually leads to different kinds of research designs. When I was in grad school, I was taught that knowledge is a true justified belief. belief. So if, if there's a claim, the claim must be true. What does it mean for a claim to be true? There are different ways of approaching that question. It must be uh, something that I believe in. So if I say that uh, learning research methods is useful, then I really must believe in that claim myself to claim that that's knowledge. And then it also must be justified. So I, mu I must be able to justify, for example, uh, I could provide some data that people who know research methods do better than those that don't, to give an example. There are also other ways of defining knowledge, but this, the point here is just to show that even agreeing with knowledge is, is something that philosophers don't really uh, have a consensus on. Let's move on and, and look at what our book says. So the book talks about philosophical assumptions and why do we need to make assumptions? Well, it is that because there are things that we can know. So we need to assume, for example, uh, what is the nature of reality? Is it the same for everybody? We don't know. I can say that because I speak and I think, therefore I am, but I don't know whether anything uh, uh, that is external to me actually exists. So this is a big philosophical question of existence. Uh, I might be living in a computer simulation and I would have no idea of knowing about it. I might be the only person in the world, the others are just simulated, we don't know. So we have to make assumptions. And uh, when we make assumptions, the most important assumption that we make is the nature of reality. The nature of reality, what does it, what is the structure of the world? Is it the same for everybody? Does every one of us have our own realities? This is covered by the study of ontology. So ontology is the nature of reality and the study of, of nature of reality. That is the most important thing to understand because there's consequences to uh, the research design. Then uh, we have epistemology, which is the study of how we can know some things and how do we justify knowledge claims. This is a bit of a less important on a, on a master level, but if you go and study for a doctoral degree, then you should be able to articulate why your knowledge claims are justified based on the epistemological assumptions. All right, so this is the, uh, the jargon. Ontology means what is the nature of reality. Epistemology means uh, how can we know things. That is the study of, of, of knowing, basically. So let's take a look at an example. And here is a CEO saying that our company is great. This simple piece of data, CEO saying that our company is great, can be understood in, in very different ways. If we approach it from the realist perspective, we would say that this is a statement of fact. The company in some objective sense is great. Maybe it's a growing and more than competition. Maybe it's more profitable. Maybe it has the best products. Or we can say that this is, uh, from a constructivist perspective, we can say that the greatest of a company is something that is not objective, but the idea of company greatness is something that the company continuously lives and the greatness is just the experience of the, of the people within the organization. So this is a very different kind of interpretation of the data. Or we can go, for example, to critical theory, and we might say that the fact that the CEO talks about greatness has consequences. And for example, study what are the consequences of all this talk of greatness to those people who, who perform below the average in this company. So if you are below average performer, uh, how does all this talk about greatness of the company affect your, your well-being, your self-worth? So depending on what kind of assumptions, what kind of perspective we take on our data, what kind of research question we ask, can lead, lead us to very different research questions and designs based on the same data. 
you don't have to know all this. So I, and I don't know all of these perspectives, but there are two main perspectives. You need to know two main schools of ontology that are applied in, in management research. Realism and constructivism. constructivism. Realism, which the book incorrectly calls objectivism. So this is realism. Objectivism is something that is, uh, it's a broader set of beliefs. It's more like, like uh, a paradigm and it contains the realist assumptions, but it contains also lots more. Uh, realism refers to the idea that there is an external world that exists independently of observation. So the company would be great even if no one talked about greatness. And it is the reality is the same for everybody. So if we ask the CEO whether the company is great, he says yes. We ask uh, a worker in the company whether the company is great, then they would say yes. So it doesn't matter who we ask, everyone provides us objective information. If they don't, that is considered error from our research design perspective. So realism means reality exists independent of measurement and it is the same for everybody. Then we have uh, constructionism and the idea of constructionism is that reality is not objective but it is something that we, we construct ourselves. So uh, the talk about greatness within a company is important and that talk about greatness is actually what makes the, makes the company great. So you might think like I was thinking when I was a master's student is that this is, uh, this is un unimportant. Why do we care about uh, this kind of socially constructed reality? We care about whether the company is objectively great or not. And this is important because people don't uh, act on what is objectively but they act on how they believe about reality. So if we believe that the company is great, even if it, objectively speaking from realist perspective it wasn't, we act differently than if we thought that the company is not great even if it really was. So how we perceive the reality, how the reality is to us, is the constructionist perspective and it shapes human behavior and therefore it is important to understand. So if we are talking about the CEO example, our company is great, a realist would take that as an expression of fact and inter constructionist person would take that as an expression of perspective or interpretation and study why that perspective main is maintained. And these are two different things. So from realist perspective, uh, we might study uh, if the company actually is uh, performing well, we might seek for additional data. So if the CEO says that the company is great, we would look for stock market data, we would look for accounting data, we might uh, look at the products or services and triangulate to see if the company actually is great or not. So we look at, we look at the question of, um, we, are, we are trying to uh, objectively quantify the greatness of the firm. If we are from the uh, constructionist perspective, then uh, we would be analyzing, for example, uh, what does it mean for the CEO of the company to be great? What does the greatness of the company mean to the people? What does this perception of greatness, how does it affect people's behavior in the organization? How does it affect their well-being? So we are looking at not uh, what happens outside people, but we look more at what happens inside people. When we take a look at the, the realist and constructionist or interpretive uh, approaches, um, I like to use this table and I'll talk about that in, in a different video. But in a nutshell, we have two main approaches. We have the realist approach, which takes uh, the world as objective, and then we have the interpretive approach, which takes the world as socially constructed, and then it uses research methods uh, that are more geared toward that, sub, that approach. I explain the realism or if you want to call it, some people call it uh, or positivism, some people call it objectivism, but realism is the more common and interpretivism. I'll talk about the main difference between these two approaches in the next video. All right, so what do you as a master's student need to understand about philosophical stuff? Well, you should know the terms. Ontology refers to the study of nature of reality, what exists, what is the structure of reality, is the same for everybody, is it socially constructed or not, and then epistemology 
means the study of knowledge. You should know these terms because these appear in research methods books and in some research articles. So that's on the basic level. Then you should understand the two main schools of thought. There is uh, realism, assumes that the world exists independently of observations and is the same for everybody. And constructivism assumes that the world is socially constructed, so it might be different for everybody. So my world is not the same as my wife's world. We, li we have different perceptions, therefore li we live in different worlds. And then finally, uh, in research studies, for example, master's thesis, Quantitative studies are mostly realist or positivist, depending on which label you want to use. And this is typically not reported because it's uh, kind of taken for granted that quantitative research is mostly realist. And then uh, qualitative studies can be a realist or constructivist slash interpretivist. Uh, and this needs to be reported. So if you are doing a qualitative study that is realist, you need to report it. If you are doing a qualitative study that is constructionist, then that needs to be reported because it might not always be obvious to the reader from the first read what kind of study you are doing. And what I also recommend is uh, just state your assumptions. If you think that the reality is the same for everybody, you can state it. And unnecessary use of philosophical jargon is something that I like to complain about because when you get to the jargon then you you typically very often use the terms a bit incorrectly and it just makes the study more complicated for the reader without really adding to our understanding of the merits of what you did in your thesis.